Welcome back to Ikea Academy and to Text Basket, the full cloud project course. Till the moment, we have created the models, we have explained what we are going to do, and of course, we have created the application DB context. Now, before we proceed with the creating the database and the business logic of this project, we have to implement the authentication from the Azure level, then we have to create the ASP.NET Core Web API project with the Blazor client, WebAssembly, uh, pre-configured with the identity for Azure Active Directory. So, to get started with this, before we proceed, we have to explain just a little bit what is basically Azure Active Directory and Active Directory P2C. Azure Active Directory in general is an identity services identity service to manage uh, the access of your customers or the users of your application, how they can sign in, sign up, and other security activities like forget, uh, forget and reset password, edit the profile, and many other things. You can give them access to only sign in, sign up and sign in, and something like this. Azure Active Directory B2C, like build specifically when you have a business or you have an application, and this application is going to be served, each user is going to be an individual. Unlike the normal Azure Active Directory for organizations, uh, the main difference here, I'll give you a real example so you can understand it better. Let's say that you are building an app for an enterprise to manage that enterprise. It's a factory, for example, and uh, within that uh, factory, there is accountants, sales people, and employees who have access to HR and so on. So you are building an application to manage this factory. So basically, in this case, you go for Azure Active Directory and you create an Active Directory for this organization so they can sign in. But Azure Active Directory P2C is built when you have a business or there is a business and there is going to be a customers for those business and you are targeting those customers to be the users of the project. For example, when you're building an um, online shopping store, uh, shopping, sorry, not shipping. Uh, so in this case, uh, there is a business and the consumers are going to be uh, public, the public users and customers, so they can log in to that system. In this case, you can use the Azure Active Directory. Why you have to go with this approach instead of having your own database and store your data? Basically, right now, the security requirements is very high. This is number one. Number two, trying to satisfy the user with a very great experience is not that easy to build and it requires a lot of time, a lot of efforts, and money as well. So in this case, you directly go to Azure Active Directory or such a service because they are managing all of this for you. It's very scalable even if you have million, hundred uh, uh, thousand of users, million, ten million, the service is going to be very flexible, very scalable, very responsive, you will not have any issues. In addition to all of this, you have very, very control over your customers and users. In addition to all of this, it's very, very secure because it's built by an organization and it's a full project. A lot of families is working in, on it. They are updating it every time. So, while well, if you want to build this by yourself, it's going to be very time consuming and very tough process and you cannot or maybe you can but you need a lot of resources to make it in the level of security for the Azure Active Directory. So this is going to be very easy. You will see right now how within two or three videos of a few minutes you are going to set up a very complicated advanced uh, authentication system with just a few steps. So let's get started. but. Before we move to Azure, let me just explain the process how it's going to be. Basically, this is going to be our API here, and the Blazor project is going to be here, which is the client, basically. When the client logs into the system, there is going to be here as well the Azure Active Directory. So, the client request try to authenticate, uh, the user try to authenticate himself using the Azure Active Directory, so the application, the user will be redirected to another page, the same experience when you try, for example, to log in to uh, Skype or Outlook or Xbox, whatever, you always go to the Microsoft uh, web page to be so you can able to log in. So in this case, they either log in or create a new profile. After that, he requests an access token in this operation. Then the, the second step after the user creates the profile uh, or signs in, the Active Directory will call back with a token for your application. So right now, the client has a token. So the third uh, step 
is to call your API and basically here your Azure Active Directory exposes two applications, one for the client and one for the server, one to authenticate the users and the other to validate the access token. So when the API receives that request, it fishes the token from that request and go to the Azure Active Directory through the API application and it asks the Active Directory that, hey, please verify this token and tell me, is, is it a valid, it's for a, a real user or it's fake? So then the Active Directory will try to validate it. If it's valid, it will say, okay, yes, it's a user and it's valid, it's not expired. And those are the info of this users. So then the API gives you access to that resources, goes back to the client from your API. It looks just like a little bit complicated here in this process, like going to the Active Directory, login, retrieve the token pack, but all of this is managed to you via the SDK or the library called Microsoft Authentication Library from the client side and the server side. So just going to be a very normal steps to do. Right now, we can move to the Azure portal here and start creating the Azure Active Directory B2C tenant. That's great. Right now, this is the main page of my Azure portal. Let's click on Azure Active Directory here. And here there is a button called create a tenant. We can click on that. And as you can see here, you are going to choose uh, Azure Active Directory or Azure Active Directory P2C. So we need to create an Azure Active Directory P2C. Let's click right now on next configuration. So we have to give it an organization name, then a domain name. So the organization name is going to be tickets, basket like that. Okay, it's valid and exists. Right now, the domain name is going to be ticketsbasket.onmicrosoft.com. So, let's type tickets, basket. Okay, yeah, great, it exists. Right now, you can choose the country. I want all my data to be in the United States. And this is everything you need. We can click review and create and create. Okay, the tenant has been created successfully. We can right now click on this and I'll click on the resource and it will switch my directory. Or when you refresh that page, okay, you can click here on the top right on your profile in general, you can click on switch directory and here you can see all the tenants you have so you can switch for it by clicking on Tickets Basket, the name of the organization, and right now you will be redirected to that. So it's basically now all the resources going to be within this Azure Active Directory P2C. This is the domain name, and these are the app registrations we are going to use in the next video to create the application that will give the client and the API access to this Active Directory the users, the role and, and administrators. But before we, before the end of this video, we have, uh, if you remember at the beginning, we have said you can manage the sign in, sign up, reset password and this stuff. Here in the Azure Active Directory P2C, you have to define this as user flows. So you have to click here. You define this on the level of the Azure Active Directory. Then you create the applications for each client you want to give access to this tenant. Great. When you open the user flows here, you are seeing there is no policies for the sign in, sign up, or reset password or whatever. Let's click on a new user flow. Okay. This is the user flow type that Azure Active Directory P2C provides to you. Sign up and sign in. In this case, you allow your users to sign up and sign in at the same time. Profile editing, reset password, only sign up, sign in, or sign in using resource owner password credentials. What we are going to do in, for, for this project, we will use sign up and sign in and reset password. So to get started, I will click on sign up and sign in. Then here you have to choose the version recommended is the new one. It's the next generation and latest features. You can click create. Okay, you, you have to give this policy a name. So I will call it sign in up like this. Right now you have to set the identity provider. Basically, uh, 
for, for Azure Active Directory P2C gives you a big flexibility to give the, your users the flexibility also to log in via Facebook, Gmail, Twitter, and other providers. For now, you can set up email, and as you can see here, uh, users can log into your application. You need to select at least one of valid user flow, and you can add more in the identity providers section for your directory. So you can enable login with Facebook, Twitter, and those amazing identity providers. Right now, for the multi-factor authentication, when the user, after they type the username and password, they should be asked to provide a, a code because this increases the level of security of your application because it's going to be based on two things. What the user knows, which basically is the username and password, and what the user have physically, like the mobile phone or the email or something outside the username and password. So in this case, it's going to be a very layer of security, very advanced one, because even if someone gets your username and password when they try to log in from a different browser, they will be asked to provide a code, will be sent to your mobile phone or via the email. So in this case, they cannot log in without that. So I will choose here email. And for the multi-factor enforcement, you have to set it for conditional, it's recommended. Because as you can see here, the conditional access policies, when conditional is selected, you can set it to off unless the conditional access policy requires it. And here, at the end, what you want to ask the user about? What are the attributes of the user? Basically, you, we will choose given name, surname, city, country, region, email address. You can click see more here show more so you can see more and more properties like the job title the identity provider and all this stuff and this is only what we want city country uh, email address uh, given name surname you can also set the display name if you want because if, like if it's different than the first name and last name for example you can set the first name for ahmed the last name for muzaffar but the display name is going to be for example ahmed k dot muzaffar it's going to be different. So after the user logs in, this is for register. Now, after the user logs in, what the attributes are going or the claim they are going to be embedded in the token that will be retrieved back to the user. Basically, here you can choose all the claims you want. And I will choose city, country, display name, email addresses, given name, and the surname. OK. The idea here is this one is disabled because when you you registered, you can set on the email address. But after that, yeah, you can add more and more. So because there is email address and email addresses, yeah, just to mention this, that's a great. Right now we can click OK and click on Create. Even for uh, in the next video, we'll see or the one after we will see the UI of this the sign up and sign in, so you can customize it and add your own application branding. This is what we are going to you to do for the tickets basket. So right now, if we open up this policy here, as you can see, the user attributes, and here we have the page layouts and the languages if you want to customize the branding and to support multiple languages. That's very easy to do. So we'll leave it for now. Right now, we can go back to the Azure Active Directory user flows, and I will click on new user flow, choose password reset, recommended as well, click create. Now, let's give it a name, reset password, reset password by email, and make the multi-factor authentication by email as well. And here, we have to set the return claim, show more yeah so let's click create you can ask users more about more info rather than only the predefined by Microsoft but this requires some custom attributes creation and a little bit more work this is not our uh, topic we don't want to go very very deeply with Azure Active Directory 
What we are going to do in this course is just to implement a full sign up and sign in process with reset password and all the security required to build a full business app. So that's more than enough. And it's very great, very easy. When you right now you follow the steps, it's going to be a very interesting uh, process and very powerful at the same time. So for the moment, this is going to be enough for this video. Right now we have initialized the Azure Active Directory. We have understood what uh, Active Directory P2C means and how we can leverage that power for our application. And we have third, uh, set the user flows for signing an app and for a set password. That was very easy. Thank you so much for watching. Right now in the next video, we are going to create, we'll register two applications, one for the Blazor and one for the, the, the API to one to give the user access to register and sign in and the second one to validate the token sent by the user to the backend. Then in the third video, we are going to create the applications and we are just directly done from the authentication part. We can go back to the business logic. Thank you so much again. I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to support. Thank you.